So till now we have covered the structure and operation of the injection diode. We have covered the diode equation and then we have covered the VI characteristics. And now after the VI characteristics, we have also discussed the uh, properties of a diode like resistance of the diode and capacitance of a diode. We also discussed uh, how a diode will behave in reverse bias. So we have specifically uh, discussed the breakdown mechanisms. So this breakdown mechanisms will again you will they will come in the application in the GNR diode structure and operation. We will learn it again. So I will not be teaching it in, in depth again. So okay, almost I can say that even the GNR diode structure and operation is also started. But now I'll first complete the diode applications. Okay. In this today's class, I'll be starting the diode application. I will not complete all the diode applications. So with respect to the syllabus, I'll cover the topics based upon your uh, from the gate point of view. you should have muted your mic okay anyways so so today we are going to discuss about the applications of diode we have four major applications the first application is that diode can act as a switch a electronic switch so unlike a mechanical switch the diode is a fast switch so I, either you can keep the diode in on condition or in the off condition so the diode working in a forward bias, it acts like a closer switch. If the diode is uh, in operating in the reverse bias condition, then then it is working as an open circuit, or I can call it as an off switch. Okay, and then we have the rectified circuits, diode service in the rectified Why circuits. your voice is not audible? My voice is not audible. So the volume is low. Volume is low. Okay, let me check. Okay, now is it audible? I think so. Yeah, yes, okay, fine. Okay, is my screen visible? Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Okay, don't worry. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Unmute only when required, okay? So do not interrupt in the middle. Otherwise, it's so only uh, you can unmute and answer uh, if you are feeling any kind of uh, disturbance. Okay. So diode can act as on or off switch. So whenever the diode is operating the forward bias, it is a close, it acts like a closer switch or the switch in on condition. If it's operating in a reverse bias, then it acts as an open circuit, or I can call it as an off switch. And then we have a rectifier circuit. Rectifier means it will allow the current to flow through the circuit in one direction, whereas if the current direction is reversing, it will not allow it to flow. So I can call it as a current. It allows the current only one direction, means either in forward direction or only in one di reverse direction. It will not it will not allow the current to flow in both the directions so it is it is not a, a bi-directional device it's a unidirectional uh, device okay so you'll be learning in your circuit uh, circuit subject regarding this bi-directional unidirectional uh, kind of elements so diode is a unidirectional element okay. and then you have clipper circuits as i gave a little hints in the last class clipper circuit means we are going to cut the waveforms Supply waveform. So supply is a sensor waveform. We are going to cut uh, that waveform using this diode. We are going to do the wave shaping. We have, to, we have to modify the given waveform as per our choice. And then we have clamp and circuit. So we are going to clamp the magnitude of the volt or the supply voltage 
to the desired voltage. Okay, so first we shall see the diode as a switch application. So before proceeding to the diode uh, as a switch application, I want to convey that so no switch will act instantaneously. So even if you consider a mechanical switch, so the time it takes to turn on or turn off uh, will be in the milliseconds duration. So compared to that, electronic switches are faster. So diode is also not an instantaneous switch. It will take some time to move from on condition to off condition or from off condition to on condition. What we are going to discuss today, diode as a switch. So here in the figure, you can see the circuit. So when you are using diode as a switch, what we are doing, we are giving a supply at one end. We are taking the load rest at the other end. And the current is flowing through the circuit through a diode. Diode which is can which is in initially in forward bands. So if you see the waveforms, initially VI is equal to uh, VF. So it's a positive voltage. Okay, it's a positive voltage. And then at time T1, at time T1, we are suddenly reversing the. Uh, we are reversing the magnitude of the voltage. Okay, so we are moving from uh, plus Vf to minus Vf. So we are suddenly reversing the input voltage. Okay, so what we expect ideally that so as soon as this voltage reverses, the current should also reverse. So in forward bias, what is the, the diode current? What will be a current through the diode? Can you tell me the expression for that? So anybody, so I'll unmute, I'll allow you to unmute. So I not into exponential of V by Vt, eta Vt. So I not into exponential of V by eta Vt. Minus one will be there, you can neglect that anyways. So, and then I also told you that diode acts as a register, right? Then that in forward bias, the resistance of your diode is very small. Okay. Now, if I have to consider uh, the circuit, uh, is a KCL cable equation finished for you in the circuits? Please let me know. Yes, sir. Yes. So I hope that. So, so for this circuit, in this circuit, For this circuit, I am going to write the KVL now. So if I write the KVL, it will be VI minus voltage across the diode VD, okay, minus IE into RF equal to J, okay. So voltage across the drop across the diode V or VD, this VD, so V or VD. Then, now what uh, I can rewrite as, so if I consider this uh, resistance of the diode as us, RF, forward resistance of RF, it is VI, so VD is equal to I into RF, current through the diode, going through the diode, into the resistance of offered by the diode, so it is VI minus I into RF plus so current will be now equal to supply voltage divided by R plus R. And you know that forward resistance of by diode is very small. So if you neglect this uh, RF, this value will be nearly equal to the supply voltage by RL in forward bias. In forward bias, uh, in this uh, circuit uh, in the waveform, it is given that magnitude of your VIS, VF. Right. So in the circuit diagram, here you are writing that IF is equal to VM by R. It's nearly equal to, it's not like that. Additionally, you get a RF term, which we are neglecting for practical purposes. Okay. So your forward current is almost equal to VM by RF. So this current is going to continue until time T1. At time T1, what we are doing, we are suddenly reversing the supply voltage. So voltage reversing from plus V to minus V okay. And you know that in reverse bias condition, what is the current through the diode? 
in reverse bias condition reverse saturation current so i is equal to minus i not right so you will expect so if you suddenly reverse the the supply voltage you should expect that current through the diode should also change to from this v a by minus i not so this minus i not is shown here in the diagram d okay so it should have changed instantaneously but however this uh, change is not uh, instantaneous it takes a duration okay so in this diagram you can see that instead of suddenly changing from v a by r l to minus i not it is not suddenly ch changing it is taking some time so it is taking a time okay dt total time or uh, you can call it dt okay, this much duration of time it is taking it's lagging okay so before it will reach the reverse bias current minus i not okay so that's what uh, we'll be studying in today's class so we have two components of this time so one time we call it as storage time other time we call it as transition time so here in this uh, ppt what is written if the external voltage suddenly reverses in a diode circuit which has been carrying a current in forward direction diode current will not immediately fall to its steady state reverse voltage value okay so voltage will also voltage across a diode will also not be directly suddenly change so in the diagram in the last uh, diagram you can see that the voltage across the diode which is a uh, very small so that is minus r into i into r is not suddenly changing to uh, this value okay so the supply voltage value minus p r it is taking some time okay so this why it is taking such a long uh, delay we shall see now okay so here uh, earlier when i was uh, discussing about this uh, current through the diode i have skipped some small portions uh, like uh, what are the components of currents and all but however i have explained that the injected current will decrease uh, decrease in the exponential fashion okay so so when uh, in a forward bias what happens when a forward bias holes start moving from you know, p side to n side right these holes that have entered into the n region are said to be injected carriers and because these injected carriers are now minority carriers in the n side these holes when they reach the n region they are minority carriers that's why they are said to be injected minority carriers okay so this injected minority carriers they will gradually decrease as they move away from the junction if we consider that junction a is at x is equal to 0 in the diagram so as they move so as they move from the junction at the junction their level will be very high the injection carriers will be very large number as they move through the end region so they will gradually decline decline and they reach a uh, equilibrium value pn not so pn not is holes in the equilibrium number of holes in the end region okay so initially at x uh, Let let that value be equal to P n, P n of zero. From P n of zero, so in bracket converting in bracket means I mean to say that it's the position. So position is x is equal to zero. From this level, the minority carriers will be decreasing to P n in an exponential fashion. This exponential curve. Okay, so if I write this exponential curve, it will be And somewhat similar to P n not zero minus P n not minus P power it will be in a fashion in a, in a exponential one better some some function will be there exponentially decrease decreasing function will be there okay. I will not go deeper into that even it is not the first thing but the only thing is that you should remember that this decline 
is going in an exponential fashion. Similarly, if you see the to the left hand side of the junction, okay, so not only the holes are moving from P side to N side, but also electrons are moving from N side to P side. Now these electrons, when they are reaching the P side, they are, they will be called the injector magnetic carriers. So electrons are less in number in the P side, so they are called magnetic carriers because they are injector from the N side. They are called injector carriers. Okay. So even they will be declining in the exponentially decline exponential fashion, and they will reach a steady state value, N P naught. Okay. So this is happens in a forward bias. So this entire diagram is for a forward bias. If you consider the diagram B, this happens in the reverse bias. In the reverse bias, your uh, magnetic charge carriers uh, will distribution will be in, similarly in this manner. So as they move from N side to the junction, the P N naught value will take the P N value P N naught to X naught. Okay. So for the uh, electrons uh, for this holes and electrons density to reach to this value it takes some time they cannot suddenly decrease okay until such time uh, the diode will conduct until these values this carrier concentrations come down to zero the diode will conduct and the current will be determined by the external resistance in the circuit okay so until this whatever these values this curve is declining to this value okay so until they reach this equilibrium value this circuit will conduct diode will conduct okay so if you see this diagram c you can see that pn minus pn naught at junction this is a function on y axis it is constant till time t1 because the voltage is constant once you are suddenly reversing the voltage, this value uh, cannot reach to the nearly zero suddenly. It will reduce in exponentially downward curve. Okay, so it will take some time. So let us see what is given in this uh, text. So for long time up to T1, input voltage EVI is equal to VEF in the forward direction. The resistance RL is large in comparison with that of drop across the diode. So I mean to say that your RF or RF diode the forward resistance is very much less compared to your external resistance. Then current I is nearly equal to VF by RL, which is equal to IF. So this yes function. And then at time T1, your voltage suddenly reversing to minus VR. So voltage has shifted from plus VF to minus v okay but the current does not drop to zero so ideally your current should have dropped to zero or at least to the minus i naught if you are not considering the ideal layer it will be my around minus i naught but it suddenly not dropping to that value. but it initially reverses instantaneously to minus vr by r so here if you consider the current has been reversed from VF by RL to minus VR by RL. It means that still the diode is conducting as if it's a, a resistor only. So the current will only depend upon your supply voltage. Your supply voltage is now shifted from plus VF to minus VR. Okay, so your current has is also shifted instantaneously from plus VF by RL to minus VR by RL. Okay, and then it will stay until a time T2. So time T2 is somewhere over here. So this is your time T. So till this time your current is equal to minus VR by RL. Okay, at time T2, injected minority carrier density reaches its equilibrium value. So when it crosses this Pn minus Pn naught reaches zero at that instant at that instant your current starts uh, decreasing back to your minus sign up okay 
with the di diode ohmic resonance is rd okay then so rd or rs anything you can consider then at a time t1 the diode voltage falls slightly by if plus ir into rd but does not go so next at time t2 what happens is the excess magnetic carriers immediate in the immediate neighborhood of the junction has spread track across the junction and the diode voltage begins to reverse so diode voltage so where is the diode voltage here is your diode voltage this is your diode voltage so from here the diode voltage till then it is still positive it is now going to decrease so earlier as long as in the forward bias it is maintaining constantly this very and then it has decreased by small amount and then from t2 it starts moving into the negative direction so till then your voltage across the diode is only in the positive direction it means it still till the point t2 your diode is in forward bias only okay and then here it is Uh, going to the uh, negative magnitude to the minus uh, vr value okay now by the time it reaches the minus vr your current will regain to a value minus n so magnitude wise it is going to decrease okay the interval t1 to t2 the interval t1 to t2 is said to be the storage time okay the storage time is the time for the stored magnetic charges to become zero these are the stored magnetic charges okay this time from the instant it is reversing till the time this pn minus pn not reaches zero is said to be the storage time and the time from t2 till the time the diode has fully recovered to minus uh, to the uh, reverse bias condition is said to be the transition time so during the transition time what happens your junction capacitance your junction transition capacitance will gets charged okay so so it takes some time for the capacitance of the diode to be charged so you so you need not worry about the interfaces of this so even if you are not understanding any in the details of this topic you do not worry uh, because uh, this topic is not there in your syllabus but i just want you to convey that the switching of a diode is not instantaneous but it takes a small delay for the diode to reverse for, uh, uh, change from forward bias condition to reverse bias condition this switching time has uh, two components one component is known as storage time ts and the component is known as transition time during the storage time your minor injector minority charge carriers will exponentially decline to a value zero and during the transition time what happens your voltage across the diode will shift to the uh, negative direction and then it will reaches the value equal to that of your supply voltage okay. so in the last diagram you can see that voltage is reaching to a value equal to minus vr so it is now acting as a open circuit when the diode is in open circuit what are supply voltage that you are giving it will appear across the diode however when the diode is in forward bias the entire supply voltage will not appear across the diode only a small voltage that is equal to i into rf or rt whatever it is that drop will be appearing a possible okay so with this i'll wind up this topic of uh, diode acting as a switch okay so if you have any doubt in this topic you can unmute and ask you can ask if you have any doubt in the topic so if not i'll move on to the uh, next topic next application which is your rectifiers
somebody is unmuting you can raise your hand so that i can see you or you can type in the chat box i'll wait for two minutes so that you can type in your questions so yesterday in the on sunday i have kept this doubts clarification session so only few students one or two students have utilized it so others can also join the session every sunday it will be between 10 am to 11 am so if you are unable to ask questions during any class hours either due to the limited time or because of any other reasons you can directly come and ask your doubts in the sunday session okay. so then i'll move on to the next topic topic is a diode as a rectifier it's also application of diode so rectifier means any electrical device which offers low resistance to current in one direction but a high resistance to the current in opposite direction so it allows the current to flow through it in only one direction it's a unidirectional uh, element okay so it will allow only the positive off cycle or it will allow only the negative half cycle depending upon which device you are using. Okay. So the diode will act as a rectifier. So diode will allow only the positive half cycle. So in the positive half cycle, your diode will be there in a forward bias. And your diode will act like a closer switch. So whatever the supply is there, it will reach the other end of the diode. So if the given supply from the two from the anode side, it will reach the cathode. Whereas, if your diode is in reverse bias, then your diode will act like an open cell. So, the input, whatever the input you are giving, it will not reach the output terminals. There are three different combinations of diode rectifiers. The first one is called halfway rectifier. First combination is said to be halfway rectifier, in which only half portion of your uh, supply voltage is going to appear in the output terminals. And then we have full wire rectifier. Uh, we have two different configurations for full wire rectifier. So one configuration in which we are using a center tap transformer. In another configuration, we are using only the diodes in a bridge uh, configuration. In the form of a, it appears as if they are uh, placed in a bridge, uh, bridge kind of formation. So today we'll be discussing about the half wire rectifier. So, as given in the circuit, so this is the circuit in which we are saying that we have a AC input. So, in rectification, our objective is to convert this AC input into a DC output. So, basically, rectification means that conversion of AC into DC. Okay. So, here what we are going to do is we are giving AC supply. So, let us say that we are giving supply from our uh, uh, you are power care supply that is 230 volts so entire 230 volts you cannot flow through the diode because your diode may not withstand the entire voltage so what you are going to do you are going to reduce the volt supply voltage so by means of a isolation transformer okay, this transformer uh, will reduce your input vol voltage magnitude Okay. So, if you are giving 230 volts, you might be want to decrease the value to let us say 10 volts or 5 volts so that your diode can bear the supply. Okay. So, now the effective input for the diode is here. It's the secondary voltage across the transformer. As you know that transformer simply, uh, what does a transformer does? It transforms the voltage from either from higher voltage to lower voltage or from lower voltage to higher voltage. Here we are using a step down transformer. So step down transformer means we step down the voltage magnitude. 
okay so we are stepping down the ac input voltage to some desired voltage vi now this voltage we are giving across a circuit in which we have only two elements one is a diode other is your uh, external load resistor okay so so let us say that we are applying a sinusoidal input so we have a ac input which in which we have both the positive half cycle and the negative half cycle when we are giving the sinusoidal input for the circuit at the output so output is obtained across your load resistor this is called load resistor r at so across this load resistor we will get the output in the output we, are, we will observe that we have only positive half cycle we do not, we will not be able to see the negative half cycle across the load resistor okay so because in the output we are only able to see the positive half cycle we will term it as the rectified output okay we are chopping off or clipping off the negative half cycle in the output at, at the output terminals okay this i can also call it as a wave shaping so we are changing the wave, uh, sinusoidal signal into non sinusoidal signal now. okay of course for the positive half cycle it's still sinusoidal but we are able to clip off uh, your negative half cycle okay. similar kind of thing we will be doing in the clipper circuits here we are cutting off the negative half cycle across the output terminals okay so we shall see the integrals of this circuit now i'll open my notes Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. So last year, last year I made some notes for your seniors regarding the rectifiers. So that's what I'm going to show you. So the kind of questions that you can expect from this uh, topic is that explain the operation of half wire rectifier. There are some expressions for some of the circuit uh, terminology like the pull factor, peak inverse, voltage efficiency that we shall discuss. So as I told you before, a rectifier will convert a AC voltage to a unidirectional voltage. So DC should not confuse that DC is a, a, may or may not be a constant DC. Okay, so by DC sometimes we may confuse that the magnitude is always constant, it's not so. So DC means that it's a unidirectional uh, value. So yeah, a special case is a constant DC. So if you are seeing 5 volt, uh, 5 volt uh, battery it means that it's a special case it will only be going to give a magnitude of 5 volts okay so even the magnitude is not constant if the direction is only in the positive direction we can call it as a unidirectional voltage or current okay. so that's the first thing and next here the half a rectifier will convert ac voltage into pulsating dc so pulsating means it's going to as if it's going to on and it's going to off it's pulsates okay, it's a pulsating voltage it's a pulsating voltage using only one half cycle of the applied ac voltage. only one half cycle of the input will appear across the output terminals so here the circuit connections are there. Given AC voltage to be rectified is applied to a single diode contained chips with a lower resistor R. So when it's required to step up or step down the input voltage, a power transformer is used. So this is a transformer, and then you have a diode D, and you have a lower resistor R. Okay. Now let us consider that we are giving the input. So see if this is capital V I. So let this be the input voltage so v i n whose magnitude is varying from uh, peak values are varying from plus v n to minus v n so supply is a sinusoidal supply 
plus p by is equal to three. So I'm considering that. So input voltage V i is equal to V m sine omega t. So where omega t is it radius? Omega t is it radius? Omega is the angular velocity. T is the time. So if we multiply them, we'll get the angle that's in radius. So you can see that I have written the on the x-axis pi, two pi, three pi, and so on. So for a sine solve signal, we have the total radians in a full cycle is two pi radians. So this is one cycle, first cycle, second cycle, and so on. So likewise, in 50 hertz supply, if f is equal to 50 hertz, then time period of one cycle is 1 by 50 cycles per second that's equal to 20 milliseconds okay and now what we are going to do is we are going to check the output the output what happens whenever the diode is in forward bias so whenever the supply voltage is positive your diode will be in forward bias so when the diode is in forward bias it acts like a closer switch now effective circuit will be as if you are giving um, as if you have a v input over here and then you have a short circuit it's a short circuit and then you have a load resistor R. Now because we have for practical conditions, uh, we will be considering that the diode resistor is uh, very small or the voltage drop across the diode is very small. So we will be considering it is as if as a short circuit. So what happens? Your V0 will be equal to your Va. So what are the supply that you are giving at the input terminals will be appearing across your load rest. So for this condition, I will be writing V0 is equal to VIN. Okay, so what is VIN? VIN is equal to VM sine omega t. This is valid. This equation is valid only for first half cycle. So only when the supply is positive. So it is valid for 0 less than or equal to omega t less than or equal to pi radians. Okay. Now if I consider that if I am giving the negative half cycle. So when I am giving the negative half cycle when the negative half cycle appears across this diode what happens? Your diode will be now in reverse bias condition. So for the anode, it should always be connected to the post terminal if, if the diode should be forward bias. But if I am giving the negative half cycle, then what happens? Anode will be getting a negative magnitude. Okay, so your diode will be in uh, reverse bias. In that condition, it acts. The diode acts like a open circuit. As I told you regarding the diode acts like a switch. So now your circuit acts as if it's a open okay now what happens the input will not be able to reach the output because for the current to flow circuit should be a, a closed circuit okay now because of this gray open terminals what happens their entire supply voltage will appear across this two terminals so here will be your v in and across your rl rl your voltage V0 will be equal to 0. So V0 will be equal to 0 for pi less than or equal to omega t less than or equal to Okay, that's what you are seeing. For the post of cycle, you are seeing the sinusoidal signal. For the negative half cycle, you are seeing, seeing a 0. Okay. And then the current will it follows the voltage if you consider that diode acts like a resistor and that 
your resistance there is none so your current id will follow the supply voltage okay so this how your current uh, waveform looks like so if you go to the working here again the same thing will be told for the positive half cycle of the input ac voltage the diode d is in forward bias and hence it contains so for the positive half cycle diode is forward bias and it contains so when the current flows through the circuit there is a voltage drop across the load resistor which constitutes the output voltage for the negative half cycle diode d is in reverse bias and it does not contact it acts like a open circuit so current in the circuit will be zero okay and then output voltage will be equal to zero so for the negative half cycle no power will be delivered to the load so here the load is your load resistor okay so in electrical sense always remember that whenever we are calling it as a load it means that current run by the load okay it can be a resistor it can be a inductor it can be a capacitor anything you can keep at your output terminals always load implies that it's a load current run by the load so it might be the current run by the resistor the current run by inductor or the current run by the your capacitor load implies load current so if i'm saying no load i mean to say that the element is not drawing any current so no loads scenario means that the current in the circuit is current run by the uh, your element at the load terminus is zero so now we have to do some analysis so in this topic again you will come across small small uh, derivations so this basically analysis of the circuit so when a circuit is given so you need to analyze different parameters of the circuit so we shall begin with the current so if i consider that the peak value of your current uh, waveform is im then i will be equal to im sin omega t for the positive half cycle and then it will be equal to zero in the reverse bias and then again the peak value will be of the current will be equal to voltage by resistance offered by the circuit so we have two resistance offered in the circuit one is the diode uh, forward uh, resistance Okay, Rx, and then you have your load resistance because the two elements, the diode and the your diode and your resistor are in series. These two are in series, so your total resistance is equal to R plus R. That's why current is equal to voltage by R by R plus R. This is your peak value. IM means that maximum value of the peak value. So ideally, your R will be a very small in the forward bias, whereas the resistance offered by diode and reverse bias will be very large. For practical reason, we will consider it as infinite. Okay. Now we need to derive the value of the DC output current. So initially, we are given the AC. voltage now we have to determine how much of current uh, dc current is drawn at the uh, load terminals so for which what we need to do is so you should know that dc means the average current value so idc means the idc is nothing but i average value so for the average value how will you uh, do the average value in the mathematics you might be knowing knowing how to calculate the average value how will you calculate so uh, because the diode and the load resistor are in series your id will be the same as your load resistor load current also so i equal to id so the average value will be find out by simply integrating this curve and the average value you can obtain by integrating the curve and then dividing by the time period so you can integrate so you have two portions of this curve from 0 to pi it is the sinusoidal portion and then from pi to 2 pi it is equal to 0 okay so because it's equal to 0 you may omit this integration okay. 
So finally, you need to find out this average. So how do you find out the average value? So average value is T1 to T2 I dt by total time. So the time is T2 minus T1. So I will be integrating from 0 to 2 pi that's for full cycle and then I will be dividing by 2 pi minus 0 that is again 2 pi. So I will be integrating from 0 to 2 pi and then I will be writing I on the x-axis I have uh, radiance that is d of omega t. So this instantaneous value of current I will be rewriting again. So I will be distributing this. Uh, current into two parts between 0 to pi and from pi to 2 pi. From 0 to pi, its value is equal to im sin omega t, and from pi to 2 pi, it is equal to 0. From 0 to pi, it is im sin omega t, from pi to 2 pi, it is equal to 0. So, this value will be obviously 0. Now, we are left out with only one term im sin omega t. As we know, that integral of sin theta is minus cos theta. So here we will be replacing what we are doing is we are going to replace we will take omega theta is equal to omega t. So this will be turned into sin theta t theta. This im is a constant value it is a peak value. So you can take it outside your integration you can bring it over here. Now integral of sin theta is minus cos theta. So here I will be writing minus cos theta and then terminals are your limits are integral limits are 0 to pi. So what is the value of cos pi? Please answer. What is the value of cos pi? Minus 1. Minus one. Okay. It is not 1, it is minus 1. So what I will be doing? So minus of in this value I have to write I m into minus of cos pi is minus 1 and then minus of cos 0. What is cos 0? Cos 0 value one is one, one. 1. 1 sir. One. Yeah. So it becomes minus 2 into minus that becomes 2. So this entire value will become 2. Okay. So this value is 2 and here we have 2 pi. This is 2 and 2 gets cancelled. You will be left out with I m by pi. So if I remove and uh, this things. Okay. So I'll be left out with IDC equal to I M by pi. Okay. So you should remember these values. So can you see my screen? Is my screen visible to you? Sure. Is my screen visible? Okay, fine. So, id is equal to i m by pi. This you should remember because most of the objective questions. So, sometimes uh, you will be appearing for the jump or the transfer exams where uh, you will not be allowed to use any calculator. In such scenarios, you need not, uh, you will not have any time to because one for every question only one minute will be given. You will not have enough time to do in this entire integration. So, you should always remember something like for a half a rectifier where dc value is equal to I m by pi, your, your voltage value is equal to V m by pi. Even the numericals sometimes are important, decimal values. So it is 0.318 I m. Okay. So it is equal to V m by pi into. So again, I am now, now replacing I m with V m by pi into R plus R. And we know that diode ratio is very small compared to the external. So, I am taking the condition RL is greater than greater than RF. Then IDC will be nearly equal to, if I remove this RF value, it will be nearly equal to Vm by pi into RL, where RL is your external load resistance. So, IDC will be at value to equal to Vm by pi R. So, if you remember this uh, formulas, it will be helpful for you to 
solve any numerical problems. Also, this question might be appearing for your uh, semester exam class. And then, this is output voltage. So, we need to find out, we have found out IDC. Now, we have to find out uh, VDC. So, VDC is equal to IDC into load resistor value RL. Okay. So, across the RL, the voltage is VDC. The DC voltage is VDC and current flowing is IDC. So, I'm taking VDC equal to IDC into RL value. So, it will be equal to IM by pi into R. Again, I can rewrite that IM as VM by R plus R. Again, if I neglect RF value, I can take. So, if I neglect uh, RF value, what happens? This RF is nearly equal to zero. If I neglect that RL, RL gets cancelled. So, it will be left out with VM by pi. So, VDC will be nearly equal to Vm by pi by or 0.319. Okay, so we have found out uh, your DC current and DC voltage. So next we need to find out the RMS value. So with the RMS value, I'll stop today. So RMS, what is RMS value? Root mean square, right? So how do you find out? Uh, so how do you find out a root mean square value? First, we need to square the value. So if, uh, if I want to find out a value for f of x, root mean square for a function f of x. So what I have to do? First, I have to square this f of x. Then integrate this along the values. So let us say that x1 to x2. So root of mean of squares. So if I want to oh, find out mean of squares, first I have to do squaring and then I have to uh, mean it. Meaning means dividing by the time, this interval. This interval is x2 minus x1. Okay, this I am finding out the mean of the squares. Now I have to do the root square. Okay, so to the power half. That's what I am doing. What I am doing? I am taking the current small i and then I am squaring it, okay, and then integrating it between the limits 0 to 2 pi, and then dividing and dividing by 2 pi minus 0, that's again 1 by 2 pi. Okay, again, this is equal to, uh, I'll take it as dt tag left of 1 by and again I am writing to the power half, so it is just rooting out. Now, I'll replace, I will divide this integral in two parts between. 0 to pi and again pi to 2 pi. Between pi to 2 pi, it is 0 value. So, this integral will be becoming 0. Now, if I take between the limit 0 to pi, i value will be equal to i m sin omega t. Right? So, if I square is that, it will become i m square sin square omega t d omega t. Okay? So, so what what can we write sin square theta as 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2? Can we write like that? What is cos 2 theta? Can anyone tell me what's the value of cos 2 theta? Sin 2 theta by 2. Either it you can write 2 cos, cos square, square theta minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sin square theta. Right? You might have learned it in your intermediate. So from this expressions, I can write sin square theta as 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2. The same thing I am replacing here. I am taking this i m square which is a constant outside the integral and then inside I have sin square omega t. So instead of sin square I am rewriting as 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2. This 2 is because I am getting cos 2 theta. Okay. Now I have two terms. 1 by 2 is one term and cos 2 omega t is another term. So, integral of, uh, so this is as if I am doing the integral of d omega t. So, what is integral d theta? What will be integral of d theta? Uh, theta. What is the value of theta? So, that theta value I am writing. So, instead of theta I am omega t, so I am writing omega t. So, this 1 by 2 also which is common I brought it here. 
here this 2 into 2 has become 4 okay now I'm writing for integral d omega t I'm writing omega t and then I'm writing the minus sign over here now what is integral cos theta what is integral cos theta sin theta. theta sir sin theta okay so what is what will be integral of cos 2 theta sin 2 theta, theta, theta by 2 yeah sin 2 theta by 2 that's what I'm doing so for cos 2 omega t I'm integrating I'm getting sin 2 omega t by okay now I'm applying the limits I have to apply the limits between 0 to pi so this becomes pi minus this becomes pi minus 0 this becomes so sin 2 into in place of omega t I have to write pi what is sin 2 pi it is 0 again if I replace this 0 sin 0 will be 0 so this entire term will be cancelled and become 0 so I am left out with i n square by 4 pi into pi this entire thing is in within a square root value this pi pi gets cancelled so I am left out with root over i m square by 4 so this will be equal to i m by 2 so rms value in a half square rectifier will be equal to i m by 2 so it is 0.5 i m now tell me which value is higher rms value is higher or your dc value is higher average value is higher in a half square rectifier average value sir. average value so let me check what's the average value i got what's the average value you are getting it is 0 0.318 im so 0 0.3 is higher or 0 0.5 is higher which value is higher average value is higher yes so your rms value is higher so this is how you will, you will be eliminating so you may not calculate all the problems you may not do the entire problem in any given question when you are doing any create a kind of a, a bits so from the options you can eliminate some of the options by seeing the relationship so if you are seeing in an option rms value is given lower than the uh, dc value we can eliminate that particular option without even keeping your turning on your calculator okay so in most of the objective questions especially in the concrete exam mm, so always try to eliminate the options rather than entirely solving all the integrations all the calculations so these things you should these are the practical things that you should remember so here you should remember that rms value is greater than your dc value okay sir now again I am in, in a Hi. This is half a rectifier, Nana. This is the full rectifier. We are not taking the entire sinusoidal voltage. We are only taking the only the cost of half cycle. Output we are only getting the cost of half cycle. So we are beginning with the same logic that we are finding out the root of the mean squares. We are ending up with IM by 2. This is valid only for the half a rectifier. We are not dealing with a full sinusoidal voltage. RMS value in a full sinusoidal voltage is I am by root 2 that I agree okay but this is a half a rectifier we are finding out the current in half a rectifier in which at the output you are not going to see any negative half cycle of the current negative half cycle of the entire current is lost right for the entire negative half cycle your diode is not conducting at all okay so so if I take the full sinusoidal voltage, uh, sinusoidal current, there you might be getting I m by root 2. So root 2 is large value or 2 is large value? Which one is large value? 2 is large value or root 2 is large value? 2 sir. 2 sir. 2. two so, sir. so if you are dividing by large value, this value will be a smaller value, right? So in a half a rectifier, the current in a half, RMS value in a, in a half a rectifier will be less than your RMS value of your supply volt, supply current. So if you're, if you're supplying IM by root 2, if you're, if you're taking a full sinusoidal signal, your RMS value is IM by root. But when you're taking a half a rectifier application, the current is only IM by 2. Okay, so this is a small value. So this is a small value, this is bigger value. This large value, this is small value. Okay, so in half a rectifier, your current is smaller compared to that of a condition where you have a 
full sinus order C. Okay, so with this I land. So I'll, I'm, uh, simply what we are next to do is instead of I M, I'll be replacing again B M by R M plus R M. So this is your R M S. So we will discuss the next portions in the next class. I'll stop the recording and take the attendance.